Of course, we're hitting one of the shoaliest sections on ICW at low tide. That was incredible. I am feeling the stress. We immediately. <laughs> We have a beautiful Charleston sunset ahead of us. We're Jen, Elliot, and Ollie. In 2019, we booked a one-way flight to Colombia, and after traveling to 11 countries, we were locked down in India for five months. Coming back to the US, we decided to pivot into boat life and cruise on a 6,000 mile journey called America's Great Loop. Make sure to subscribe as we share the highs, lows, and everything in between. Today, we have an extremely long day. We are heading from Beaufort to Charleston. And you might say, that's not that long. With well, trawler speed, it's like 10 hours, 10 or 12 hours, depending on tides and everything. And we have quite a few challenges today. We're gonna have lots of shoaling. We're gonna have Elliot's Cut, where there's insane amounts of current. And on top of all that, we are docking in Charleston and the current and the nice Charleston boats. Something to look forward to. Some people say their office has the best views around, but check out my view this morning. Ollie is such a fantastic boat dog, she just loves it. Alright Skipper, where are we going today? We're on a dolphin hunt. This is a dolphin cruise. We'll find some treats and, uh, and some, some good long walks, right? Yeah. It is so beautiful this morning. We finally have a day with like blue, clear blue skies, sunny weather, no wind. I mean, I hope it stays like that for the entire day, but as we were talking with like all of our looper friends last night, we've had a lot of wind on the loop so far. It just seems like, you know, every other day there's like quite a bit of wind. And uh, people were saying it's kind of hard to, you know, enjoy some of the stops because you know, when it's you're there when it's windy and you're moving when it's sunny, so it's hard to really enjoy, you know, the sunny days exploring a city or a town or just, you know, trails or whatever. So, yeah, it's nice to have a very nice day and I hope that we have many more of these upcoming uh, here on this section of the loop because, ooh, it is cute. And I'm surprised there's not a lot of fishermen out. It's a Sunday morning. It is pretty cold though. It's at 46 degrees right now, so maybe that's why. It's four layers. I was just telling Elliot that I don't want oatmeal, muesli, or yogurt. And he said, well, babe, you know, we're on a nine, we're on a 10 hour cruise today. We have nine hours left. Why don't you just make whatever you want? So the conditions are so calm this morning that we are making a Sunday morning or 
what I call an anchor or a dock breakfast this morning to really just enjoy and take in the day. Jen was just messaging uh, Dog House on Nebo, which is another reason why everybody should have Nebo on the Great Loop for just communicating with other loopers. And they're just a little bit ahead of us. They got out early, earlier than us this morning. And they're in the Ashtapo Kusaw cutoff, like the cut uh, upcoming for us. And it has a lot of shoaling. And so you're just it's asking. Low tide. And it's And it's almost low tide, it's a falling tide. Never a good time to be going through a shoaly section. But um, fortunately, the low tide today is a, a foot and a half above uh, mean low. So that's good. But we were just asking them, and, and Tracy's like, oh, it's a, I just saw 1.5 feet. So, you know, it's going to be eventful when we go through it, but it's nice to kind of get the lay of the land, especially for somebody who's uh, doing it right now, right in front of you. We really do love Nebo just because we, it allows you to connect with so many other loopers, and we have not found any other boating app that allows you to communicate, like text message essentially, with other boaters. It's a really, really excellent app. eggs with it but it is literally just in time for us to go through this cut now this cut on our northbound trip last year was a little hairy we were very very nervous we didn't really plan this well well we left a couple hours late but the channel is like so small i mean honestly that's right on ground today we are basically freaking frack we don't know what we're doing so oh boy i i i can i i I remember how nervous we were because we were seeing like half a foot under our keel and this time going around we have low tide again yay so we're just gonna make the most most of it we're gonna go super slow and hopefully we don't run aground but if not it's okay because the tide will just come back in and it'll raise us up and all will be well in the world again so it's okay all right it is time for our shoaling. Of course we're hitting one of the shoaliest sections on the ICW at low tide. <laughs> you know, the, the problem when you have a long day is you can't really plan your tides as much as you would want to. So, you just gotta hit it when you hit it. We are using Aquamass right now and Bob 423's tracks. We're just gonna follow that and go extremely slow. Because if you slightly bump something when you're going slow, you can just slightly reverse off of it. If you bump something really hard, going really fast, it might be kind of hard to get off. Ooh. That's a low. I didn't really see this kicking out too much mud, so I think we're just right above it. Uh, 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 lame. Stay in the lane. Come on. Come on. Come on. Alright, I need two hands. <laughs> Breakfast! What? Just in time for some stress. Yeah, you know, I think I'm gonna marry you one day. <laughs> Great! <laughs> I was planning on that. <laughs> oh my god.
how it was incredible on the, along this cut. There's just like, we saw so much movement in this on the side of the channel. And it's like, there was a great heron, like probably 10 cormorants, and at least three or four dolphins, just all like coexisting. And at the local watering hole, I'm sure there was a whole bunch of fish there. It was just so neat. It was like very calm and peaceful. Nobody was like thrashing around, like trying to get their fish. They were all just chilling. And we're chilling. We are coming up to our second shoulder section of the day. We made it past the first cut just fine. We saw four feet at the entrance, which was like six inches under our keel. Pretty shallow. Uh, and then about like five feet, the lowest sections throughout, so not too bad. Um, and now we're going through Fenwick Cut. And you can always tell when you have a shoulder section because Aquamaps has the US Army Corps of Engineers surveys. And they do a really good job of, of relief shading. So here in Finway Cut, we have a, a lot of red. Quite a bit of showing on the east side of it, uh, where it's all red, very narrow. And with your eyes, you can see it too. Um, of course, it's low tide, so there's no other time to travel on the ICW than low tide, right? But it is beautiful. Like there, in this area, like just coming through uh, with this cruise, like it's, there's a noticeable difference. There's a lot more clay, a lot more sand and a lot of these really large trees. It's really pretty. And that one, I'm pleasantly surprised. We didn't see anything less than seven feet, so. And it is a rising, it's pretty much low tide right now. It just started rising. So, maybe the Army Corps of Engineer Survey is a little bit, uh, you know, outdated here. But uh, yeah, not so bad. We are coming to our hopefully final area of shoaling for the day. Coming through Watts Cut, and I mean on Aqua Maps, it's all red. Luckily, the tide has been rising. Now we are officially on a rising tide, um, so it should be good. It should be nice and safe. But we're gonna take it slow, just like the other ones. And we were just passed by a viewer, Watercolors. So thanks for saying hi and best of luck and safe travels to the Abacos. So funny the the uh, inlet side on this it's like 30 feet coming in. So you're like, oh, this should be fine. It's gonna be great, and it's probably gonna be a good five or six feet the entire way. But we did hear a chatter earlier. Somebody said that the lowest they saw was seven six. So it should be fine. It'll be fine. It's always fine. Worst case, we just do get a little bit of uh, prop polishing done. And that is what it is. Oh, you keeping an eye out for me? You gonna help me? We made it through. We had a very, very close pass there. Uh, faster motor vessels coming from behind. They literally passed us with like two feet on the side. Well, they were very courteous about it, and we were chatting about it, so we knew they were coming and everything. But it was like the closest pass I think we've ever we've ever done. And now we have kind of a smooth cruise to Charleston um, until Elliot's cut, and uh, we're trying to find our time to get there around Slack Tide. But I think if we're a little bit late, we'll have the current with us. I think sometimes it's hard to judge; it's hard to figure it out. We will see. We have a looper behind us. Getting ready to pass and a giant fishing boat. Just spraying up so much wake. Hopefully they give us a slow pass. We'll see. So there's a bit of a trick to slow passes that we figured out. There's the people that just really don't care, they'll blow by you. You know, there's nothing you can do about that. The, and then there's the people that will call you out on the radio, and those people are amazing. 
because the communication is great. And then there's a third set of people that if you take the initiative and slow down and kind of pull off to the side of the channel and make it very clear that you would like a slow pass because you are now slowing down to let them pass, a lot of those people will just slow down right when they get to you and then speed, speed up right past, giving you a nice slow pass. So that's kind of like an intention. You know, you give them the intention and they reciprocate. Sometimes we'll even go neutral, you know, just let them coast by and then we'll pivot in and turn in and then cross their wake and everything's good. Major obstacle for today. Second to last. Oh. We got a dock. Oh yeah. Our second last obstacle for today is going through Elliot's Cut. Now Elliot's Cut connects this side of the ICW with the Charleston area and the Charleston Harbor. And the cut is known for having really, really intense currents when it's not slack tide. For example, our boat goes about six knots and when we were coming southbound we reached up to 10 knots during that time and we had barnacles on our propeller so whatever we were trying to push pivot we were probably not actually going six knots that's what we go like now so it really really affects the boat so we tried to time it so that we we're going through at slack tide otherwise you want to time it where you're getting pushed with the current because fighting it would be a nightmare and that is coming up pretty soon. We have gotten through the shoaling, and now we are entering Elliot's Cut. So I think we're pretty close to slack tide, which I didn't think we were gonna make it because um, we were, I mean, it's a very long day today. We left almost as early as we could. And, but it's practically high tide. Like, I think the tide is just a little bit under high. It's still rising a little bit. But, I mean, I think it, it should be good. It's very narrow coming in, and actually the very first time we came by here, I missed it. So I wasn't looking at our like route planner, because it's like just kind of tucked in a little bit. We're going 6.4 knots right now. So when we are entering the cuts, and five, four, three, two, one, and three quarters. We're here. What's half a knot right there? Seven. Oh, it's going well so far. We're just cruising right along. We got an extra half a knot. So I mean, Perfect. it doesn't get much better than this. I mean, we got some small boat traffic. Well, it's kind of cool here because there's rocks on the sides and then surrounded by very beautiful houses. Um, and it's not very long either, but. Um, you want to tide it. You want to time it. And it's interesting because this tide is different. This current is different than the current that you almost come into here with. So we were pretty slow the past 10 miles maybe, and uh, now we're fast again. Vroom vroom. a knot and a half really I was comparing it to when we were first coming in which was six and a half but that's not our cruising speed our cruising speed is like six so it's a knot and a half for us it's nice it was very not a lot of turbulence very easy now on to our final challenge of the day we're going to be docking with some current hopefully we're on the face dock we just love being on the face dock because it's just with, you know, you just turn it into the current and the wind, and uh, typically, you know, it's just a lot less things to think about. Slips are harder, I think. So, hopefully we're on the face dock, and if not, we're just gonna, you know, 
Take it slower than slow. It's our motto. And that barge is huge. Like, we had to wait for them at this bridge. There's no way we're getting through at the same time. And uh, pivot always defers. Uh, we're very beta. And, um, <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. But, um, imagine if that thing was coming through Elliot's Cut at the same time. Like, holy crap. I wonder if they're going to announce before they go through. Like, you know, all concerned traffic, uh, barge, blah, 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 coming through Elliot's Cut. We'll hear man, it on the radio, right? Yeah, we would if they do it. Yeah, that was, that that was, was something. Crazy. Wow. You never know. It's always, always something on the ICW. I'm a little bit nervous. Heading into Charleston, there are a lot of really nice boats, which we try to stay away from. Not that we hit boats, but like... It's, it's boats all, hit us. Boats hit, yeah, boats hit us more than we've hit boats, <laughs> knock on wood. But, um, yeah, that's concern to the current. The current is so strong here that it is something that just is constantly on your mind. And three, like just docking. I mean, we've we've had a lot of positive docking experiences, but granted, you still have concerns and worries. So, yeah, I am I am nervous and I am worried. It's going to be a high stress docking situation, I imagine. Like it, not always is, but it it is pretty frequently. I am feeling the stress. We immediately <laughs> The hell thing? No. If it wasn't that we were still doing this, it would, but not now. <laughs> yeah, we are in the middle of all the boats. There's lots of boats, lots of action. There's a lot of big, 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 big boats. <sighs> and on, in other news, one of our viewers uh, just said hi to us. They're in the trolley oh, behind yeah. us with their, with their family. That was so, that so was kind. Really, really nice of them. Yeah. And in other other news, we have a sailboat anchored right in the middle of the channel. So just another day in the Charleston Anchorage. So in case you didn't know, the Charleston Anchorage is kind of tough to anchor in because it is notorious for stuff on the bottom that will basically take your anchor uh, and, and you know it'll foul up your anchor anchor so you won't be able to pull it up. And so a lot of there's a lot of a lot of comments on Navionics. So it's like if you anchor here, be prepared to be prepared to spend six hundred dollars for a diver to come. You know, hopefully, get, you know, get your anchor out of the situation. So I don't know. People anchor here all the time and it's fine. And then you know, but maybe it won't be. So it's a lot cheaper to stay at a marina. Yeah. So in other news too, my hands are sweating. Other parts of my body are sweating. My heart is racing. This is going to be great. It's going to be so great. It's going to be just fine. And in other, other news, it's beautiful and sunny and mm -hmm. a little and windy. I feel like I'm going to vomit. Yeah. <laughs> really great. Really good stuff. Honest chit chat from Show and Joe. <laughs> you can count on us, folks. Ashley Marina, please switch Nance on 71. Pivot going to 71. This is Pivot on 71. Go ahead, Pivot. Hi there, we have a couple of nights of uh, stay and we are just approaching the final bridge um, heading in. Okay, Pivot, after you go underneath that fixed bridge, you're going to take a right and I've got you on D dock. I think it is the third or fourth slip in. Great. So, a slip. <laughs> Yay! It'll be fine. It'll be fine, Everything he be says. Fine. It'll be fine. It'll be, uh, we're gonna go straight in, bow, bow in. I don't know, that's just how we like the dock. And then, um, but we're going against the current, so it should be nice going in. Yeah. So you wanna move around the cameras? Let's do it. Um. Now I should go check all the lines. We made it. 
was a very nice approach, especially because we bowed in. And that is our day cruising to Charleston from Beaufort. I mean, pivots off, lines are on. I'd say it was a very successful cruise. Didn't run aground, didn't crash in Elliot's cut, and didn't crash into the dock. One of the things that I was curious about was how much our batteries would charge today. Because we were night on anchor, we worked literally the entire day uh, before when we filmed our video about one month on the Great Loop and our budget. Um, so we were just like, just straight draw on power all day and we recharged our dinghy battery. So I was curious, when we left, we we're at 53%. And all throughout today, wow, 97% by the end of the day. Now, you can't really tell a lot from percentages. The important thing to note here is we have 600 amp hours of lithium battery, which means we charged over 300 amp hours today while we were cruising from solar and alternator charging. Now we did use a lot of power while we were charging, that's why I say over 300, because we were running Jen's laptop, charging that all day, the iPad Pro charging that all day, and we topped off the dinghy, dinghy battery as well. So it was a great day for some energy today. How you feeling, Joe? How you feeling, Ollie? Was Good docking day. stressful? Docking's great. I met a new friend. Already? I'm ready to go for a nice long walk. Enjoy the day. Oh, you want to go for a, a walk? What? What? Oh, yeah. You go for a walk? Let's go, folks. Let's do it. Yes. Let's get off this yes. boat and let's go for a Wag walk. Wag your tail let's if you want to go for a walk. Some sniffs. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It looks like you don't want to go for a walk. Oh, 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 Dad. I really want to go for a walk. Please, would, you, would you rather go for a bath? Oh gosh. I'm out of here. <laughs> Goodbye, folks. <laughs> she did have three baths last week. Well, quit saying that word. That word doesn't belong here. We're going to plug in here at the marina and get Pivot Dock ready. Put up Fred, all the good stuff, and then go for a nice good walk. Let's go. Oh, Ollie, you're not here. Come on. Let's Come on. Go. Come on. Let's go for a one, walk, two, walk. Three. Can you jump that far? Come on, one, two. Okay. Want some help? One, I don't blame you. Two, three, let's go. Let's go, bear. You got it. All right, oh. we might need another fender. All right, Ellie, this way. Come on, Vominos. <sighs> Always feels good to be at a dock, especially when you anchor like 99% of the time, like we do. We just completed our two mile walk. Not too shabby, could, could have been longer, but we do have some work to do and dinner to make. <laughs> so two miles is what it was. I think probably another mile, we would have been in the heart of downtown. Yeah. So it's not too far from where we are and it's nice. There's a highway here, but there's a walkway in the entire way. So it's nice and then you walk along the water. Yeah. We have a beautiful Charleston sunset ahead of us tonight. I can't wait. Yeah, it's gonna be gorgeous. I am cooking mushroom stroganoff. Elliot's probably gonna hate it because it has a lot of mushrooms in it. It is in the Instant Pot, so it should be pretty easy. It'll cook up pretty fast. And that's just the meal that I want tonight because I am very tired. Very, very tired. Just the meal we're looking for. Super easy. Um. Mm, it's dripping. Mm. Thank you guys so much for watching our cruise from Beaufort to Charleston. Honestly, it went off pretty much without a hitch, so I'm kind of waiting for the other shoe to drop. But it was great. And tomorrow we're going to be doing some fun things in Charleston. Honestly, we don't know yet. <laughs> We've been here multiple times. We have a bunch of videos on Charleston. So we're not gonna do the normal thing. We'll see. 
Thank you so much for watching. I will see you guys tomorrow on our Great Loop. Where are we going today, Captain? To the treats. Say it again. Where are we going today, Captain? We're gonna go find some dolphins. We're gonna go get some treats. We're gonna go get some treats. We're gonna find all the good walks. Yeah. Yes, we are. <laughs> he wants breakfast. I said, let's get the drone out. And he's like, let's have breakfast. I really do love Nebo just for that feature. It's so great. I mean, we we use it. So Wait, are we supposed to be over there? Green and a red? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah? Sure, sir. Um, Captain. Uh, okay.